understand what are the requirements for God to move in our life. If you want to experience the God of the 11th hour, there has to be something that you must do. And we've said it over and over, that the first thing that you must do, you have to have the undiluted word of God. The word of God is very important to everything. I say it requires what? The uncompromising word of God. Number two, you have to have unquenchable faith. Number three, I say we must develop love. Love is very important. Love is very important. Unconditional love. If you and I need to have God's fullness, somebody say fullness. I don't mean partial, God's fullness. We have to operate in the spirit of love. And in the context of love, we explain three kinds of love. We said one is uh, eros, which means sex love. Okay, I love you because of how you make me feel. The other one is philos love. Philos love, which means relationship love. It means I love you because of what I can get from you. That's why you need to understand how to weed people away from you who only want to get from you. The third one is the agape love, which is the unconditional love. And that is the love of God. Now, nothing wrong with Eros love. Eros love is good in the context of marriage. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But agape love is God's kind of love, which means that love that extends to you, to somebody, which means unconditionally, which means, which means I don't have to have anything, but I love you because of the love of God. Someone say amen. And that, sorry, and that is the type of love that God wants us to practice in his house. Amen? And so, this, the Bible says, For by these shall all men know that you are what? My what? Disciple. Not by tongues. Because devils speak tongues. Hello? I say, not by prayer. Because devils pray. It is only by the demonstration of love for one another shall all men know that you are my one disciples. And it is based upon that premise that we begin to understand the mind of God concerning our breakthrough. And then I went further to talk to you about the elements of love. The elements of love. And I said to you, we have to develop, number one, the spirit of forgiveness. You must develop it. And in that context, I told you also, there are various, there are various things that we have to understand about forgiveness. Number one, forgiveness flows from God. And because it flows from God, it is through that flow that you flow to others. Now understand this, you can't give what you don't have. A man can only give to you what they have. That's why no matter how much you rub your head, hello somebody here, no matter how much you try to trick him, he, he, he get, he get, he don't have. Hello. He, he don't have. Because a person can only give to you what they have. And so, if you have not received forgiveness, you can't give it. So, it tells me, Holy Queen, that there are people today who are Christians, but they don't understand forgiveness. Because, you understand it, when you understand that God has forgiven you, it is through that flow, you flow to all that. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. So, number one, forgiveness, understand, it flows from God first. Number two, I said, forgiveness has no limit. Because if you limit forgiveness, you will limit your breakthrough. It's like this. When you set a limit on how much, on how far you can forgive somebody, then you are setting a limit on how much, on how far that God can bless you. Say, neighbor, let's take away the limitations. You know, most of the people say, is the devil, is the demons. There's no demon. Hello? 
Hello. Sometimes it's we ourselves. It's time for us to purge yourself and say, God, I don't, I will not put limitation on God's blessing for my life. When you keep harboring unforgiveness, you are limiting God's blessing for your life. Number one, forgiveness flows from God. Number two, for, don't put limit on your forgiveness. Number three, forgiveness is not selective. It's not what? Selective. First Thessalonians chapter 3. It's verse 12. It's not selective. What does that mean? What we are saying is this. Is that you don't choose who to forgive. Hello church. Stop being a hypocrite. I said stop being what? A hypocrite. You don't, you don't have the right to choose to forgive this and don't forgive that it is satanic it is demonic it is barbaric it is not of God it will limit God's blessing for your life the Bible says in that scripture I just quote look at it it says and may the Lord make you to increase and excel and overflow in love for one and for all for what? For all people. Just as we also do for you. There's no, listen, you don't choose. Forgiveness, you don't choose. That's a face you choose. Forgiveness is a command from God. Anything that's commanded cannot be a choice. And this is why some of us we are still be, we are still dealing with the, the demons of five years ago. When you are supposed to be moving on to a higher dimension. Amen. And so God says it's time for you to understand that forgiveness is not selective. Listen, listen, whether the person is your ethnic, racial social status you have to forgive it has nothing to do with ethnicity or racial status oh you know she's not in my class then who is your class I can forgive this one but she I will never forgive her she's too low to me how you mean low it means that you have you have not known God yet. Because the Bible says, for those that know God, shall be called children of God. So again, forgiveness entails that number one, you have to realize that it comes first from God. Number two, it has no limit. Because Peter, Peter asked Jesus. How many times? Seven times? Jesus said no. Seventy times seven. It means it means infinity. Oh, Pastor, you know, I cannot forgive her because she did before and now again. No. Some of their friends, you know, I will never. I will never. I'm saying, are you really born again? Are you a child of God? That you are so full of yourself that that same forgiveness that God gave to you, you can't give to somebody else. And you are saying, you know, but, but, but Bishop, she did before, and now two times to two times. Listen, forgiveness has no limit. Listen, listen, it's hard to swallow, but that is the truth. And if you follow this truth, God will open your doors in your life. So, Forgiveness has no limit. Forgiveness is not selective. Number four, forgiveness breaks down walls. Walls. Many of you today, you have erected walls to stop your breakthrough. Because sometimes you tell yourself, you know, I'm, I'm superior. Why are these walls? Because you say, I'm superior than her. 
I'm better than her. Who told you that you are better than her? You may have some knowledge that she don't have, but there's something she has that you don't have. So church is not about class or social status. It's about the demonstration of the love of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. And so, so what happens is that forgiveness helps to break down walls. Some of you today, there are people that are supposed to bless you right now. There is a wall. Because you are failed to let go what happened about two years ago. About three years ago, you fail to let it go. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 And so, I told you, two elements of love. One is develop the spirit of forgiveness. And finally, the second one is become a peacemaker. Hello? Become what? I can't hear you, church. Become what? Become what? A peace. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you truly a peacemaker? Or you're a mischief maker? I come in strong now. Because, because Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. I close with this. Because the church needs to wake up. The church is devoid of power when there's rancor. The church is devoid of, 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 of breakthroughs when there's strife. While the devil and his cohorts are laughing at them, the church is suffering. The devil is a liar. I come with the word of God to tell you today, it's time for you and I to become peacemakers. We are called to be peacemakers and not mischief makers. Listen, what is to understand this? Blessed are the peacemakers. The word blessed means empowered. That's why I can tell you that when we become a peacemaker, God will empower you to overcome the devil and his cohort. Hear me, hear me good. Be, see, as a peacemaker, that does not mean watch this. So it's a peacemaker. I want to make a statement here. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called so if you are not a peacemaker regardless of how much tongues you talk or how much song you sing require you are a child of the devil excuse me now excuse me i just say that is the word of god first why we can't be hypocrites in the house of god somebody say somebody say somebody say change your ways now i was supposed to pick up a tax and offering before time but i prophesy to you if you if you if you don't give way tonight holy ghost fire blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Understand, church peacemakers receive empowerment from God not because they are talented, because they are trustworthy. Give us one more time. I say, peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers. It means they are empowered, not because they are talented, because they are trustworthy with certain information and certain power of authority. 
So if you didn't hear what I just said. Peacemakers, blessed are the peacemakers. It means God said, I will empower them, not because they are talented. Because we have people who are talented, but they are not trustworthy. Hello, someone right here. There are people who are talented, but they cannot keep information. They are mad, leak like mini boss. The devil is a liar. Say, neighbor, check yourself. Are you a, are you a peacemaker or are you a mischief maker? Oh, I'm touching some dangerous water tonight. I have five more minutes. Say, neighbor, are you a peacemaker or you are a mischief maker? The devil is a liar. The house of God is a place of peace, not a place of mischief. So I come to warn you today. It's time for you to change your ways. I don't know what you come here for. After one year, two years, three years, it's time for you to change your ways. Otherwise, God is about to yeah, 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 yeah. God is about to do something about your mouth, about your case, because it's time for the church to arise. Because you are handling, you are stopping the flow of God's blessing. Hear me now. One man called Achan. He made her go. Achan brought cause to the camp of the Israelites. I don't know who are you tonight, but any Achan this camp, God will take them out. I hear someone say, ah, like somebody made, made Bishop angry. Nobody make me angry. I'm just who I am. You can even make me angry. Because if I'm angry, my God. Hey, but I was angry and see not. Uh, let me say something. You see, on the time, God said, I will God said, blessed are the peacemakers. It means God is not blessing them because of their talent. God bless them because they are trustworthy. Blessed are the peacemakers. God is blessing them. Not because they are weak. But they are meek. I said not because they are weak. But they are meek. Not because I become a peacemaker makes me weak. I'm not weak. I am meek with me, with me strength under control. I, I can I can, I can turn this place upside down, but I realize I'm under authority. It's called straight under control. I can, I can, I can destroy here in one minute, but I, all I know is that there's, there's, there's a head over me. Oh, two more minutes. Peacemakers. It's so I'm frustrated to see after years of ministry, we see how people who don't understand what God called them to do. We can scream, we can shout, we can speak in tongues. It does not move God until you become a peacemaker. It's time for us as a church to get out all the hypocrites. Say, neighbor, I hope you, you are not a hypocrite. Yeah, 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 yeah. The church of God is about to move to another dimension. The house of God is about to experience the oil of God. And therefore, any acorn in this camp, God will take them out. Because God's call, God call us to become peace make. Mm. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. Now, why? To be truly recognized by heaven, you must be a peacemaker. Choir worship don't make you recognized by God. Giving tithes and offering don't make you 
recognized by God. So his seeds don't make you recognized by God. The suffering in the Bible says, Blessed are the peace. Which means you go out of your way just to bring peace. Because you know for sure there's a blessing attached to every child that. Hey, you are just too quiet. Blessed are the peace. I will hit that word until you get it. You wonder why some of you are not blessed. You are praying. You are fasting. But there's so much of wicked thoughts, wicked mindset. The Bible says the heart of man divides wickedness all the time. But I tell you today to take God, take away every wickedness in my heart. It's time for me to stand and make peace with my brother. Because I am called a peacemaker. How can I be in the house of God like this? Where power is flowing, where the anointing is flowing, I remain down. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Except if God is not here. But if God is here, I say, if God is here and I put my spirit right, I put my mind right, no weapon form against me shall prosper. Because I know for sure when I'm sleeping, God is fighting my battle because I'm a peacemaker. As a peacemaker, let them take your name to the highest of your mind. Nothing will happen because the God of fire will fight your battle because you're a peacemaker. Say, neighbor, are you a peacemaker or you're a mischief maker? Everywhere you enter, anywhere you go, it share problem, problem, problem. Every department is problem. Everywhere you go, they call your name. The devil is a liar. I don't care. God says it's time for you to get yourself to order and say, God, this is not me. This is not who you make me to be. You made me as a peacemaker. Stop rubbing yourself and the church of God's blessing. You complain, you mama, oh, there's no power, oh, there's no face, but yet your heart is wicked. Delight, you see, I, I would have picked up the offering before I start preaching this. Because some people right now, they go and start hiding their offering. I command you to lose your offering tonight. People don't like this kind of message. The one message well, God will turn me around and bless me. The devil is a liar. Get yourself together. It's time for you to get back because the blessed are the peacemakers. It means you must take time to get out of yourself, get out of the way, and, and put yourself in between God and say, God, I want to bring peace to this place. Why must your name be called for every mischief? Are you happy? You say, I don't care. I'm blessed of the Lord. I'm highly. Shut your mouth. I left heaven. The Lord, shut your mouth. You are hypocrite. be excited to spoil trouble everywhere you go in the church at the place of work in your home blessed are the peacemakers I've been saying it until you get it once you become a peacemaker God will empower you I don't care how many planets against you they will, they will drop dead one after the other
Blessed are the peacemakers. For you to be recognized by heaven, you have to be a peacemaker. It means your life must be devoid of strife. How can you be excited to see strife between two sisters? And you are so excited. Oh, I tell them before, it will happen. Now kill them, kill them. The devil is left, not in this house. There has to be order in this house. Uh, hear me. God said, I tell you, it's time for you to get your act together. I said, get your act together and get back to God. Do you know how much power is here when we become peacemakers? The blessing will overflow from you to you to you to you to you to you. To you. Why? Because we are peacemakers. Let me close. Let me close. I said, God, why should we be peacemakers? It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called. Call what? Call what? It means, watch this. Every qualified child of God has an inheritance. Every qualified child of God has an inheritance that comes from the overflow love of God whether your haters like it or not that's why I know I got haters I got people who are jealous I got people who gossip every single minute but I cannot dwell on that my own is to show love my own is to show peace so regardless of how much haters are surrounding me as a child of God I have an inheritance that's why we are called to be peacemakers listen what do you know? God does not dwell in an atmosphere of confusion. Let me show you why some of you, your, your breach is not happening. God does not dwell in an atmosphere of confusion. That's why our lives must be devoid of excessive hostilities and evil thoughts against fellow human beings and especially of the household of God. Our lives must be devoid. Our lives must eradicate excessive hostilities. How can we be hostile? You are so hostile to a fellow believer, a fellow church member. Then something is wrong with your belief system. Either you are used of the devil or you are devil yourself. I'm sorry to tell you. I will tell you straight up. But the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. How can we, our lives be so hostile against your neighbor, against your sister, your brother? Our lives must be devoid, eradicated, or else excessive hostilities, evil thoughts. Because he or she did you wrong does not mean your thought of her or him should be evil. Because if you don't, if you don't know, evil will consume you too. 
So church, as I close tonight, we are looking at the two elements of love. The first one is develop the spirit of forgiveness. Second one is become a peacemaker. Once you have those two, the devil can't take you out. I said just now, God is not the author of confusion. Let me say some, 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 some things that you don't know. You and I, you and, you and I don't have the spiritual legal right to tag or label a people or a person based on our carnal perception of who they are. People look at you and they label you. They look at you and they put a tag on you. You don't have the spiritual legal right to place any tag upon people. And when you do that, you put a wall or a fence. Say, I, I can never walk with him or walk with her. It is satanic, it is barbaric, it is demonic. I know some of you don't like this now. You were screaming while I was prophesying now. You don't like this one. You don't like it. I can't, I, I can't hear your voice no more. Like something went and dry your voice. So if you sit down, quiet, 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 quiet. Like, 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 like somebody do this man something. You don't have to do me anything. I preach based upon God. If, if you are following me for the past three months on TV, I've been speaking on the power of for, for, forgiveness. Because God wants to speak to the church. I would say, if you have ears, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches. I want to read for me. Everybody read for me. For God is not but of as what? Again, again. God uh huh. But a what? Of what? Of what? As in all what? Including this church. Including this church. If you think you can come here and make mischief, we go smoke you out. But it's time for everyone to come to the knowledge of God. And let God begin to release his blessing upon us.